Hey pilots, welcome aboard Plasma 1945. I'm going to walk you through configuration and setup of your dedicated Fox 3MS solution server. These are the steps you take after you've signed up and received this email from Fox 3 with a whole bunch of useful information. The key things you're looking for is for your server number, your user ID and password. These are unique to you. Don't share your password. Do not change your password. That's in red as these are dedicated. If you want your password changed, you'll have to open a new ticket through the Fox 3MS Discord. Now, the welcome email will get you the instructions to connect to the Cloud Drive URL, which if you click on, will usually have a blue background and a login box. And also, there will be a login to the Eagle Dynamics website. For those users who have DCS World standalone, this will be fairly familiar because that's how you log in to go buy a new module or to check in on your account. For Steam users, the Eagle Dynamics login is usually not present unless you've some signed up at some point for Eagle Dynamics. But all you gotta do is just copy that Fox3 account name and then click on the login page, grab that user ID and paste that into the Eagle Dynamics login box. Make sure there's no extra spaces. And same thing applies for the password. Copy that and paste that into the password field and click authorize to log in. If you do have a standalone account, you might need to log out of it first. All right, once you've logged in and clicked on your profile, on the left side, it'll say game servers and my servers. If you click on my servers, a box should appear and it should have a server name. In this case, my server is called New Fox 3 Server 251. Same thing, you can copy the login name and go to your next cloud account and the password. These are the same as Eagle Dynamics and log in with those to Nextcloud. Now, what is Nextcloud? Nextcloud is kind of like Google Drive. Oh, and by the way, if the password doesn't take, make sure there's no extra spaces in it. You might need to retap it manually. And back to Nextcloud. It's kind of like Google Drive in a sense that it shows you the key working files of your DCS world server that Fox 3 has set up. So this is where you would upload your missions, your files and your configurations if you want them to appear on your server. Think of Nextcloud as a bridge between your computer and the DCS server. Now, just because the server is showing up on the Eagle Dynamics page doesn't mean it's in Eagle Dynamics. It's just a common interface that you access through Eagle Dynamics. So if you click on my servers as we did here, you can click on the configuration gear and here you can change the name of the server. If you ever do that, make sure the Fox 3 A3251 is in my case, or you may have a unique number, stays as is. So leave your number as is in the server name, just change the front part of it. So here I've changed it to, to, to testing and hit save. And as you can see, server name has changed on the left hand side and says restart server to apply changes. And this is an important thing. Every time you change something about your server, you have to restart the server. So I'm back in the server browser. I put in 251, hit refresh, and let's take a look to see if the name has changed. Nope, it's still called new Fox 3 customer server. Now, if I want the name to change, what I gotta do is I gotta hit restart, and this will restart the server. And after a few minutes, once the server comes back up, I can go back to Eagle Dynamics DCS page. And yep, there it is, it says testing Fox 3 server and server is paused. So if I go back to my multiplayer browser and hit refresh, the server should now appear with the word testing. So remember, anytime you do something different to your server, change password, change its name, load up a new map, and you want to make sure you recycle it to the restart. But for maps, you can usually just switch them around. And as you can see here, it says that it's a Marianas training site. Well, I don't want to fly on Marianas. I want to make my own map. So I'm going to jump into DCS really quickly, set up a mission. This is fast forwarded about eight times. I'm going to plop an airplane and I'm going to give it my own livery that I've got. 
get the airplane to start in the air and I'm going to put a bunch of refuelers or cargo planes. I'm going to try to fly in formation with them. So now that I've created my mission, I'm going to save it in DCS, open beta or wherever location you would like to save your file in. And I'm going to jump to my Fox 3 cloud browser window and click upload. I'm going to find the mission file on my hard drive and upload it to the Fox 3 cloud URL. So now all I got to do is click on the small plus button on the right side of my Eagle Dynamics My Server window. And here's a whole bunch of files, but hmm, my file isn't there. Well, the file sometimes won't show up right away. And sometimes you might need to click on the double dots to go one level up and then go back into the missions folder and boom, your mission file will appear. After a few seconds, it'll show up in the list. And to activate it, you just click on run. And so the mission that I've created on my computer, I've then gone to the Fox 3 cloud link, uploaded the file. It's now copied to the server. I clicked on the plus button to add it to the server itself. So just because a file is uploaded to the server doesn't mean it's in the queue. So to add it to the queue, you click on the little plus, the window pops up, you choose it and click run. And after a few seconds, now the mission is running. So let's jump back to DCS, go multiplayer, and let's find my server. I'm going to put in 251. There's the server. It still showed the old map. I'm going to hit refresh one more time. And now the new server name has appeared, including my quick mission that's running there. As part of all packages with Fox 3 servers, you're going to get SRS that's integrated. And here's my mission. And as you can see on the left side, it says Fox 3 is a spectator. That's the admin account that's running this server. I'm going to click on Plasma. And I'm going to click Briefing. And let's go fly. All right, pilots. So I am now connected to the server and to the mission that I just made for myself. So I'm in the cockpit of my SU-27 flying around on a Fox 3 server. Now we got this done in about 10 minutes and hopefully it wasn't too, too complicated. I'm a bit of a techie, but uh, I can also pretend to fly formation with this IL-76. As you can see, it's very easy and very straightforward how to set up and configure your Fox 3 server once you receive the instructions and just follow the steps. The important thing to keep in mind is the Fox 3 server is running in a location in a data center somewhere around the world. To control it, you need to log into Eagle Dynamics with the username and password provided to you and look under profile and then my servers. To add missions to it, you need to use the Fox 3 cloud link to which you log in with the same credentials as your Eagle Dynamics login that's provided by Fox 3. And that allows you to drag and drop files to upload them into the Fox 3 cloud account, which then mirrors that file to the server. So any files you add to the Fox 3 cloud account after a few seconds, not right away, will then appear in your Fox 3 server. And to activate those missions, you'll go to the small plus button above the list of missions. Find the mission that you've uploaded through the Fox 3. And then you'll be able to click run to run that mission. So let's walk through these steps real quick. Let's say I want to upload a mission called Operation Snow Fox. I'm going to go to my cloud account, Fox 3 Cloud choose add file, find the mission in the list of files and choose to open, which will upload the mission to the Fox 3 cloud account that I've got set up. After this, I'm going to go back to my server dashboard on Eagle Dynamics. And I'm going to click on the small plus button. Look for the list. Is my mission here? Quick missions here, but Snow Fox isn't. Okay, that happens. Click on the double dots to go up one level back on missions and scroll through the list and there's Snow Fox. Sometimes you have to do this extra step. After a few seconds, Snow Fox will appear in the list of missions. And now all I gotta do is click on run to run it. So here's me flying right now on my Fox 3 server. 
in the escort mission and all I do is click run on the Eagle Dynamics server admin page and that will cause the Fox 3 server to now switch missions from my formation flying attempt mission to the Operation Snow Fox mission. Due to mission size, this can take a few seconds, but here we are, and we are ready to fly on a brand new map and brand new mission. So let's grab an F5 and uh, go for a flight here. I'm in my F5 in Operation Snow Fox, and I'm rolling out of control because my throttle and pedals are not set up for this aircraft. Okay, so something I gotta redo. This is on my computer, has nothing to do with the server. This is just a plasma problem. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the server here. We can click on the little gear symbol on the right hand side and we can put a password in. So this will make sure that anybody who tries to connect to your server has to put a specific password. As you can see, password can be uppercase or lowercase and it is case sensitive. So if you use upper or lower characters, those will make a difference. We're going to put in a password and click save. Now we see that there's been a password added, but the server needs to be restarted to apply a change. So every time you make a change like this to the server, except for switching a map, you have to do a restart. In DCS, I've been kicked out from my own server. That's because the server is restarted and I have to put in a password. Let's put in 251. I haven't refreshed, so I'm going to hit refresh. I could have just clicked to connect, but I'm going to click refresh here just to find my server again with the correct name of the mission. And there it is, Persian Gulf, Operation Snow Fox. And there's a little lock there now. Now the lock means that I have to put in a password. I put in the password with the correct upper and lower case. And now I'm back in on the server with the password protecting me so that nobody else can join in and watch me do stupid things. If people really want to follow me, they can see that I'm in the server, but they cannot join in without the password. So let's say your squad is in the server doing something. You just don't have time to log into DCS to send them a message, but you want to communicate with them. Well, you can actually do that because the chat window that's available on the side of DCS is interactable from the server admin. So if I want to send myself a message as a server admin, I can just type in, hello people, how are you doing? And put that right into the box on the right hand side of the window and hit the blue arrow key. That will send the message into the server. And as long as people have their chat and status window open, they'll see it. So let's bring it up and guess what? There's the message that I just sent to myself. Pretty neat. So you as the admin can send a message. It won't say who it's from because it'll just say from Fox3, what's the admin account on the server. But it is pretty neat. So somebody can write something back to you and you will see it pop up in the chat window on the server admin page. The other thing that you have here is also your IP address and port number. Now, why is that important? Well, sometimes you want to get really private. One thing to keep in mind, you can set the password and you can also make your server non-publicly visible. If you've hit save and you restart the server, your server will no longer be visible to the public in the public list of servers. Again, I've been disconnected because I've restarted the server and I've changed its parameters. And once it gets up and running, and sometimes it can take a few seconds for it to percolate. That server will no longer be visible because the public box isn't checkmarked. One thing you should never do is never change the port number. It's a field you can edit, but never change it. Otherwise, it'll break your server. All right, so I've made my server not publicly visible by unticking the public box and looking through the list. Hmm. Well, it's refreshing. So I should be able to just type in something like 251 or Red Star or Test because those are all in the name of the server and they should all come up. So let's give that a try. 251, hmm, server isn't there. 
the server is running, but if I put RS or test or any permutations or even manually scroll and look for it, I won't find the server in this list. But if I click connect by IP, I'll be able to connect to it. I'm going to copy the IP address in the port. I know there's also a password, but for now, I'm just going to grab the IP address in port. Click connect by IP and the format is IP address, then a colon and the port number. There should be no spaces at all. And if I try to connect to it without a password, I'm going to get it rejected. And if I put in the password now, I'll be able to jump into the server. Now, why would you want to make your server not publicly visible? Well, first off, usually this is if you are a squad and you're practicing something secretly and you don't want your opponents to know what airframes you're flying or even which map you're working on. Also, if you want to exclude somebody and you want to make a private server, this way they won't be able to find and see that you're having fun without them. But that's just me being mean. That's totally never happened to me. All right, last but not least, if we go back to our Fox3 Cloud account, there's a folder called TacView from which you can actually download the telemetry from your missions. And if you've got the TacView application installed, you can just click on the file and take a look at how you were flying. This is a feature that comes standard with all Fox3 servers. It's pre-configured and set up for you, and that allows you to review how you've done your flights and if you did something crazy or something wrong. The TACV file will be generated each time you change the mission or restart the server, and it'll be having the name of the mission you were flying and a timestamp next to it so you know which file to download. These files can pile up, so you do want to make sure you clear them out if you're not using them. Also, if you want, you can also have remote telemetry, which means that even while the mission is running, you can monitor it from TacView. For that, just contact the Fox 3 support team. All right, guys, this was a fairly long video, almost 20 minutes long. Hopefully it was useful. And if you've got questions, please ask in the comments below. I might create a shorter version, but uh, for now, it's just an overview of how easy it is to set up and use a Fox 3 MS server Plasma 1945, out, and make sure you don't collide with the tanker that you're flying with.